Google and Solana partnership. Why is this extremely bullish? I'll explain. Also, Lebanese citizens are utilizing crypto to fight inflation. And inflation, historic inflation of 154%. And uh, the end of the Ripple versus SEC lawsuit. I'll let you know the date. Let's start with uh, Solana and Google. Now, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, go ahead and subscribe and hit the like button. It helps the channel tremendously. Thank you. All right. Breaking. Google Cloud becomes a Solana validator. Google Cloud has announced a groundbreaking partnership with Solana. One of the world's largest cloud service providers will become an integral part of the Solana network and bring Solana into its wide array of products and services. The company said that it will be running a block producing Solana validator that will enable it to participate in in and validate the Solana network. So now Google is going to be running a validator for Solana. Now, what is a validator uh, in uh, when we're talking about blockchain? A validator on blockchain is like a banker who verifies every incoming transaction. A transaction will only be completed on the blockchain when it has verified when it has been verified by the validator. Validators are assigned the duty of verifying transactions to whether or not they are legal and accurate. So basically a validator it could be a computer that is utilized to validate something, to validate a transaction on a blockchain. Now, this will also uh, make it a lot easier for people to run a validator with their own computers on, on Google. Google is going to make it easier for people to do that. Right now, you can, you can do that uh, in different cryptos, but it's somewhat difficult. Now, with this partnership, Google... It's going to make it easier for you to run a validator, to be a validator or a node node uh, using your computer. Now, that's what it means uh, technology-wise, but how about uh, investment-wise? Now, this is what I believe. Remember, this is not my advice for you to go and invest money. I'm not advising, but this is what I think. I think this is extremely, extremely bullish for Solana. And uh, the reason why I say this is because there is already very powerful people, the top people in crypto. They're behind Solana. They're investing in Solana heavily. And uh, now with the Google edition, it becomes clear that uh, these people behind Solana, they are working in the background to keep Solana growing. And that means that they will very likely be around for the next bull run. And uh, we could definitely see Solana around 600 bucks in the next uh, bull run. Right now, Solana is around $34. And I do believe that Solana could go to around $600 in the next bull run because of the people behind it, because of the partnerships. Uh, when there is a new bull run, these people have uh, a lot of money to advertise Solana. And we're going to see a lot of people seeing Solana advertised. And they're going to invest into Solana. Uh, 
it's just um, in my belief is that looking at the team behind Solana, uh, these people are very serious about what they're doing, and uh, that gives uh, Solana an advantage over other uh, cryptos. Extremely bullish news, definitely. Now, let's look at uh, Lebanon and uh, how crypto is helping them fight inflation. Leban Lebanese citizens embrace crypto, accept payments in USDT as the nation battles intense economic meltdown. The country is now open to accepting payments in Tether and is slowly warming up to cryptocurrencies by making it a huge part of their day-to-day -day lives. The report later adds how Lebanese citizens have started to accept payments in USDT, which has now become an accepted mode of payment in the region. Now, in this area, the inflation is at around 154%. Insane. Uh, Europe, you see it around 10%. Uh, in the US, uh, around 8%. But uh, in Lebanon, 154%. So I believe um, Bitcoin, a lot of people, ever since the price of Bitcoin came down, from the all-time high highs and now it's around 20k people mention sometimes how it was actually not a hedge against inflation but uh if you see it from the point of view from lebanese citizens turkish citizens they actually do see it as a, a hedge against inflation because their currency is uh, in, in very bad shape. Inflation is around 150%, like I said. So in this case, Bitcoin actually did protect them, uh, did protect their money. Now, they're also using uh, USDT, which is a uh, stable coin. A stable coin is uh, a crypto coin, but it's, pegged to the dollar so one one usdt equals one real dollar now usdt is on a blockchain which makes a makes it a crypto but uh it's it's a dollar you could call it a crypto dollar and it's helping these people because uh now they can pay each other in directly from uh all they have to use is a, their own phones or computers and they can pay each other without having to uh use their their fiat so in a way it's making it uh easier to navigate uh the economy right now um they're they're utilizing the technology they're using crypto now they're not most of them are only using usdt uh some of them are actually spending their bitcoin i believe that uh people that bought bitcoin early you know as anywhere else in the world are actually very well protected against inflation but uh that is What's going on in Lebanon? In Lebanon, uh, people are actually using crypto, and uh, Bitcoin is actually protecting them, protecting them against inflation. Now, let's talk about Ripple, the lawsuit. So, why do I believe that this is a the correct date? So. Jeremy Hogan and Jim Scaphon, they are saying that uh, it's going to be around March 31st, 2023. So sometime in March 2023. Why do I believe this is correct? 
Well, Jeremy Hogan and uh, other main uh, uh, characters, you could say, or other main uh, people that talk about Ripple and XRP, that they've all said that um, in the past, they've said that uh, they've said that uh, that there would be a uh, settlement sometime uh, this year, 2022. Some people were even talking about 2021, but uh, it just didn't didn't work out like that. Now that was Jeremy Hogan. He had predicted a, a date already. Uh, he thought that uh, it was going to end uh, sometime uh, this year, around uh, June, or April, between April and June. Now, it obviously didn't happen. But um, with James, James Kaflin, he actually, he's one of the guys that uh, has always talked about how this process could take a long time. Uh, so to see him actually give a date, uh, it's actually, uh, very believable. I believe his opinion, his opinions are very valid. Uh, he's a very serious guy and he's been following the Ripple case since, uh, almost since it started. Uh, we, you know, we have a lot to thank to James Casella, and he's the one that gives us all the updates when it comes to the uh, lawsuit schedules and uh, updates. Now, like I said, he doesn't give out just he doesn't give he do, he doesn't give uh, predictions very often, but um, he believes that uh, it could be somewhere in march so this is what he uh what he wrote on twitter i'm sticking to my prediction that district judge torres will decide both the expert motions and summary judgment motions at the same time on or before march 31st so yeah it could be uh i believe it's gonna be early march it's sometime around there but uh yeah, that's James K. Flan, uh prediction, and uh, I'm I I would agree with him. Now settlement, you know, you never know these things; it could happen at any time. But um, very likely, it's going to be sometime around 2023 during the month of March. All right, uh, go ahead and subscribe if you. Uh, if this entertained you or if you got informed, uh, I would appreciate it if you uh, hit the like button. Thank you uh, and see you next time.